Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snedos, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the cardiovascular. We talked about the heart. We talked about the vessels. We talked about the blood that's in the vessels. We talked about the pressure of the blood that's in the vessels. Today, I'll tell you about the story of what happens to that blood once it reaches the capillary, because we have to exchange. There is an exchange that happens here, and there is another exchange that happens here. You have pulmonary respiration and cellular respiration. They are not the same. Hey, Medicosis, I saw the title Gas Exchange, and I saw green and red, so I thought it's a video about the stock market and commodity exchange. Oh, shut up. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum digestion. No pun intended. Do you remember your heart and your lungs? Yeah, I hope so. The lung brings oxygen into your body and takes carbon dioxide out of the body. Breathe in, <gasps> breathe out. <sighs> Disgusting. This is lung respiration or pulmonary respiration. But what happens at the cellular level is cellular respiration. Let me tell you the entire story. We discussed this before, so this will be a very quick review. We start in the left ventricle that has oxygenated blood. It's gonna pump it from left ventricle to aorta through the aortic valve. Oxygenated blood will go here. And then after the aorta, you have big arteries, smaller arteries, arterioles and then you have here capillaries these have oxygenated blood on the arterial side oh i give oxygen to the cell the cell will take oxygen and nutrients from the arterial side okay the cell will use it for metabolism cellular respiration and then the cell will dump carbon dioxide and waste onto the veins deoxygenated blood in venules deoxygenated blood in veins deoxygenated blood in the superior and inferior vena cavae until you end up in the right atrium. Right atrium will pump the blood to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. Deoxygenated blood is now in the right ventricle. Right ventricle is gonna pump it, <coughs> systole. And then up there you go, pulmonary trunk, right pulmonary artery for the right lung, left pulmonary artery for the left lung. The lung will take all of this deoxygenated blood from you, will breathe the carbon dioxide out, <sighs> bring some brand new oxygen in. <sighs> And that's another gas exchange. Okay, gas exchange between whom? Between the lungs and the pulmonary capillaries. Oh, I get it. Then this oxygenated blood will leave your pulmonary capillaries, will go to pulmonary veins. They will open up into the left atrium. Left atrium is gonna pump blood to the left ventricle via the mitral valve. And then you continue the cardiac cycle once again. You do this about 70 times per minute. Today's video is about the basics. If you're a pro, check out my pulmonology playlist for more sophisticated stuff. Heart is here, lying inside the cardiac notch of the lung. Okay, basically your lungs are hugging the heart between them in the mediastinum. What's the purpose of the lung? My lungs bring oxygen to my body and they remove carbon dioxide from my body. Do you remember your respiratory system? Yeah, nose or mouth, preferably nose, and then nasopharynx, after this, the larynx, and then the trachea, right main stem bronchus, left main stem bronchus. After the bronchi, you have bronchioles. In the beginning, they are bronchioles, and then terminal bronchioles. As you go deeper, 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 and smaller, you become respiratory bronchioles. Welcome to the respiratory zone. Respiratory bronchioles, alveolar duct, alveolar sacs, which contain alveoli. Here is one of those alveoli. So this is just one alveolus. Okay, the job of the alveolus is to take the oxygen from the atmosphere and give it to your body. To which part of my body, medicosis? Be specific. To your pulmonary capillary. Where the flip did it come from? It came from the pulmonary artery. Where did it come from? From the pulmonary trunk. Where did it come from? from the right ventricle of the heart. Oh, the deoxygenated side. That's true. This is deoxygenated blood. Okay, the lung will take the carbon dioxide from you and give you brand new oxygen. Amazing. This oxygenated blood will leave the pulmonary capillaries in the lung and then will go to the pulmonary veins, open into the left atrium. And then the left atrium will take it to the left ventricle via the mitral valve. To bring air into your alveolus is called ventilation. To bring blood to your pulmonary capillaries is called perfusion. Ventilation is the lungs job. Perfusion is the heart's job. Diffusion is in between. This is very important. 
You breathe air in, okay, bringing oxygen to my body. Who's bringing it? Your lungs. And then the oxygen is going to jump onto the arterial blood. And then while in the blood, blood has what? Red blood cells, which have what? Hemoglobin. The oxygen will jump onto the hemoglobin. Give oxygen to the cells of your body and the cells will give you carbon dioxide. Oxygenated is here. Deoxygenated is here. Okay, I have deoxygenated blood. On your hemoglobin carbon dioxide is here too your venous blood is deoxygenated carbon dioxide back to the lungs breathe it out when your hemoglobin carries oxygen it's called oxyhemoglobin when your hemoglobin carries carbon dioxide it's called carbaminohemoglobin please do not say carboxyhemoglobin carboxyhemoglobin is poisonous carboxyhemoglobin is toxic carboxyhemoglobin is not co2 but C O. Oh, it's carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah, so do not say carboxyhemoglobin. Normally, you should have what? Carbaminohemoglobin. All of this was cool. Now let's call them names in a good way. Your atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay. How much is oxygen in the atmosphere? About 21%. Multiply 21% by 760, you get around 150. Hey, medicosis, it's actually 159.6. I don't give a rip. Just keep it simple. What's that 150 millimeters of mercury called? It is called PiO2. Oh, okay. And then this oxygen enters into your lungs. I get it. But your lungs are wet, full of water vapor. Okay, you have to subtract the water vapor first. When you subtract the water vapor, you end up with 105. This is the oxygen inside your alveoli. And this is called P big A O2. The big A stands for alveolar oxygen. And then the oxygen will leave the lung and will go to the blood. In the arterial blood, your oxygen is called P small a O2. Small a for arterial. So big A for alveolar, small a for arterial. Cool, I get it. So this is the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. Thank you. And it's how much? 100 millimeters of mercury. Thank you. This oxygen will decide to jump onto the hemoglobin, okay? Your hemoglobin is like a car. The car has four seats. When the four seats are occupied with oxygen, your hemoglobin is said to be saturated, fully saturated that is, about 99%, which is almost 100%. That's a very good hemoglobin. Give that oxygen to the cell so that they can breathe internal or cellular respiration. Then it's carbon dioxide. Okay, what's the name of the remaining oxygen in the venous blood PVO2? This is the oxygen in the vein. Oh, of course it's going to be less than 100. 100 was the artery, 40 is the vein. Let's review. Oxygen is about 21% of the atmospheric air. Okay, so 0.21. We get it. And then what? The oxygen goes to your alveoli. Thank you. That was the 105. Perfect. How does it go from the alveoli to the arterial blood? Well, the pressure in your alveoli will have to be higher than the pressure in your artery. Because as you know, fluids, which include gases and liquids in physics, flow from high pressure to low pressure. This is 105, this is 100. Oh, so there is like down gradient. Absolutely. This is your hemoglobin taxi car. It has how many seats? Four. Each for one molecule of oxygen. So normally, one hemoglobin should carry four oxygen molecules. When oxygen is free in the blood, pedestrians, it's called P small AO2. Once oxygen enters into the taxi, now it's called SAO2. Hi, medicosis. Will I need to learn this to be a doctor? Absolutely. ABG, arterial blood gases, will provide you with numbers for the P small AO2, the SAO2, and others. What is oxygen content? It's a concept that includes three things. The free oxygen in the arterial blood partial pressure of arterial oxygen, okay? And then when oxygen jumps onto the hemoglobin, SAO2, the saturation, is also taken into account. The third thing that you have to keep in mind is how much hemoglobin you have, hemoglobin concentration, because you could be anemic. If I have anemia, where's the problem? If you have anemia, your only problem is low hemoglobin concentration. How about the P small AO2? Normal. SAO2? Normal. Your only problem that you have less cars, less taxis. The pedestrians are fine. Each car has four seats. You have less cars, but each car has four seats and each seat is occupied. Oh, that's awesome. 
So my only problem is low hemoglobin concentration. Now, if I have anemia, what's going to happen to my oxygen content? Since oxygen content takes into account these three things, oxygen content will be low. Why? Because hemoglobin concentration is low. By the way, this is not a mathematical equation. This is just a representation. I'm just trying to tell you oxygen content depends on these three things, but do not add them to each other. That will be crazy. Oxygen content depends on the hemoglobin concentration, the free oxygen in the arterial blood, the oxygen that's bound to the hemoglobin. Now, here is a topic that makes students lose their God-given mind. Oxygen dissociation curve. Oh my goodness, shut up, it's easy. Basically, it's the pedestrians against the taxi cars. Oh, is this a Supreme Court case or something? Shut up. What's your normal PaO2, please? Oh, in my arterial blood, I should have 100 millimeters of mercury of oxygen. Let's go up, 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 up until you intersect with that graph. And look at this. How much is your normal SaO2? Oh, my saturation? 99%. That's my oxygen saturation. Normally, of course. When do we find your arterial blood to be most oxygenated? Well, near the source of oxygen, at the lungs. Perfect. So this happens at the lungs, this part of the curve. Nice. If you go down, this part of the graph is what happens at the tissue. Of course, you're losing oxygen. You know why? Because I'm giving all of my oxygen to the cells. Oh, no wonder why oxygen is going down. So PaO2 is going down from 100 to about 40. And SaO2 is also going down. I get it. So when we're talking about your lungs, what's happening? Oxygen is jumping to the blood and then jumping onto the hemoglobin. In other words, your hemoglobin is being loaded with oxygen. Yes, the customers are entering into the Uber. Pick me up, drop me off. Pick me up, loading, which means binding, which means affinity between the oxygen and the hemoglobin. Okay, at the tissue, drop me off because I wanna go to the tissue, that's my destination. Therefore, what would you call this? Well, I'm dropping you off. So it's unloading, it's unbinding, it's dissociation. It's also decreased affinity between hemoglobin and oxygen. Get out of my car, I don't want you anymore. The oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve can be shifted to the right or shifted to the left, depending on what? Depending on the circumstances. Unfortunately, students think that I'm either shifted to the right or shifted to the left. What they do not understand is that I can have both at the same time in the same body. Really? Yes. A great analogy for this is when you're exercising the right arm, but the left arm is resting. Okay, what's happening to your right arm? It's metabolizing more. Oh, so it's producing more carbon dioxide. Makes sense. It's also producing what? Lactic acid. Say it again because it was so beautiful. Lactic acid. Oh, you're having more acid, more protons acidosis. The temperature of my right arm is rising and because of metabolism, glycolysis, you secrete 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Okay. All of these are right shifters. They will shift your oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve to the right, which means what? It means get out of my car. I'm gonna give you to the tissue because in literature, the right hand symbolizes giving. The oxygen is being given from the hemoglobin to the tissue. Amazing. Since oxygen is leaving the hemoglobin and going to the tissue, we call this unloading of oxygen from the hemoglobin, unbinding between oxygen and hemoglobin. Oxygen is dissociating and separating ways from the hemoglobin. It's also decreased affinity. Get out of here, get out of the car and go to the tissue. So what are the right shifters, please? Increase carbon dioxide, increase hydrogen ion concentration, which will decrease the pH. So be very careful here. Increase temperature, increase 2,3 BPG, also increase altitude will cause me to shift to the right. So when you shift to the right, everything goes up. But be careful, this is the H, not the pH. How about your left arm? What's happening here? Carbon dioxide is low relative to the right. Decrease hydrogen ion concentration, decrease temperature, decrease 2,3 BPG. Therefore, your oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is gonna shift to the left. And with left shift, the tissue is left behind. Why aren't you giving oxygen to my left arm? Because your left arm doesn't need it. We have to save that oxygen and give it to the right arm who needs it more. Because we live in a world of scarce resources which have alternative uses. Beautiful. That's the definition of economics. 
Because of scarcity, we have to economize. There are no free lunches. You have to sacrifice. So in the left arm, the oxygen is not being given to the tissue. Yeah, and the tissue is left behind. Oxygen will remain inside the taxi. Oxygen will remain on the hemoglobin. Oxygen binding. Oxygen loading. Association, not dissociation and the affinity between hemoglobin and oxygen is high. There are some special situations to shift to the left, and this is methemoglobinemia, that's a disease. Fetal hemoglobin is not a disease, this is normal in a fetus. It could also be a disease in sickle cell thalassemia, etc. So, in a nutshell, with right shift, you're giving oxygen to the tissue. With left shift, you're not giving oxygen to the tissue. You see this black line? That was the normal curve. Okay, now when you shift it to the right, we're moving from the black line to the blue dotted line. Let's take one point on the x-axis and then go upwards. Okay, let me go upwards. What did you find? I found that my original oxygen saturation was high, but when I shifted to the right, what happened to the new oxygen saturation? Oh, it decreased. What do you mean? It means that there are less customers inside the taxi cab. Oh, it is less saturated with clients. Oh, I get it. That's why saturation is going down. And you know why there are less customers in the car? Because the customers are leaving the hemoglobin. Oxygen is being unloaded from the hemoglobin to the tissue. With the right shift, you are giving oxygen to the tissue and the saturation is going down. The opposite is the left shift. You will see that SAO2 is going up, which means what? The oxygen is staying on the hemoglobin. That's why the saturation is going up. Why is the oxygen staying on the hemoglobin? Because the tissue is left behind. Because this tissue does not need it right now. Here are the right shifters, which is the blue line. And here are the left shifters, which is the red line. With the right, everything is going up. With left, everything is going down. Don't forget your special situations. With the right shift, you get more uncoupling, unloading, dissociation, decrease affinity, because oxygen is leaving the hemoglobin because we are giving oxygen to the tissue. With left shift, oxygen is staying on the hemoglobin. Hashtag coupling, hashtag loading, hashtag association, hashtag increase affinity of oxygen and the hemoglobin but the tissue is left behind without oxygen. Pause and review. I bargained with life for a penny, and life would pay no more. However, I begged at evening, when I counted my scanty store. For life is a just employer, he gives you what you ask. But once you have said the wages why, you must bear the task. I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn, dismayed, that any wage I had asked from life, life, would have willingly paid. Tough times right here. I bargained with life and life would pay no more. This is shift to the left because life is not giving the tissue any oxygen. But life is a just employer. He gives you what you ask. If you need oxygen because you're exercising, I'll shift to the right and give you more oxygen. Cause any wage I had asked from life, life would have willingly paid. If you like this video, you'll also love my premium courses on my website, such as my renal physiology course. Download today at medicosisperfectionetis.com. I also have a cardiac pharmacology course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionetis, where medicine makes perfect sense.